Hi everyone! I am making this video to answer a question that I get a lot, which is whether children learn languages better than adults. So I'm going to really drive into that based on some research that I have um, that I have conducted from an academic paper by Timothy Dean Healy, and it is a polyglot's perspective on the age factor in foreign language acquisition. So we're going to get started. talks about how there is the critical period hypothesis, which is like the CPH. Um, that is basically where there's like a window um, of like an age range that uh, people are able to actually learn a language. And a lot of times that age, that critical, critical um, period hypothesis is mainly like towards like the younger side more than anything else, which I think is relatively from my own personal experience prior to uh, reading this article, I felt like that was false anyway, especially as an adult learner. I know I'm in my 20s, so I guess maybe I can say I can still, I'm still in, at the, in the critical period um, hypothesis range, but because I've actually taught adults and adults who have been successful um, outside of that period, I think that um, overall that's kind of been debunked. So with this particular um, academic paper, it's just more of like a rebuttal to that theory <laughs> because I will just say children, when we look, at, when it comes to children, so just focusing on that that aspect first, children, they will make um, as much of a forceful effort within their environment. And he mentions that in his paper where he talks about how kids are most likely going to attempt to fit in with their group. So like if you are moving your kids to, um, a new country. Um, I have actually a friend of mine who um, I know that her parents move around a lot. She lived in Taiwan for a while. She lived in Italy for a while. And so having to kind of get used to these different languages, especially at a younger age, is that you have to adapt. Um, he mentions in his paper on um, on this particular aspect that humans are socially, social beings and nurturing relationships are a core need, particularly during the formative years of childhood. The language or languages of significant others, particularly, particularly caregivers, is usually acquired with apparent ease during this period. However, without motivation stemming from this interactional instinct, most attempts to teach a foreign language to a child will be limited in eff effectiveness. So when we really think about this is that a child, first of all, with kids, it's more, it's more of, again, adapting to their environments. So like I said, they are like with babies, they're learning their native language because they are learning it through caregivers, people who are essential to them. Um, you know, so that's just kind of, it's just kind of how it is. You know, you're just learning it because you have, you know, it's just part of how you adapt. Um, you know, he goes further on to say, uh, they claim that those favoring the CPH fall victim to three different fallacies. So the first one says that, um, misinterpretation of, um, the first fallacy is misinterpretation of observations of child and adult learners, which might suggest that children are fast and effective at picking up second languages. Hard data makes it clear that children learn new languages slowly and effortfully, in fact, with less speed and more effort than adolescents or adults. When a family moves abroad to a different culture or language environment, differences in child and adult acquisition usually reflect psychological and social factors that may favor child learners. For example, children may be more motivated to fit in with their peer group in terms of accent. In addition, in such situations, children are often placed in more situations where they are forced to communicate in the foreign language. The second fallacy is misattribution of conclusions about language proficiency to facts about the brain. Connections between brain functions and language behavior will no doubt in time be confirmed, but their exact nature cannot be guessed from the data currently available on brain functions, <coughs> excuse me, um, brain functions in early versus late bilinguals. So really when it comes to data is that, of course, children, they have to adapt, especially when those early stages of your life, you're trying to build connections. 
Um, and I think that when we're put in environments where we have to speak different languages, like if you were to put your kid in a bilingual school, um, or if you were to take them abroad, because I actually had a, um, my host parents in Germany, they were planning on after I had finished being an au pair, they wanted to take their kids to South Africa and put them in a German school. They would still be around people who are, you know, who spoke English, which would encourage them to learn it. So those kinds of aspects can be factors for kids. If, they're envi if it's in their environment, they have to adapt in some way, shape or form. So, and then also when it, when it comes to this is that, again, when it being effortful is that with, ch with children, like I said, they're very careful, like, you know, like they're very careful with kids. They, especially younger kids, they're kind of babbling a little bit more, or they might be just using words and phrases, things that they're hearing and they're picking out. Um, cause that's kind of the natural way that children are learning. And I think that's also the natural way that people should learn in general when it comes to exposure of a language. Adults, from what I know, from my experience of teaching adults, is that they have tendencies to be where, because they already have a foundation in, a, in their L1 or L2, or whichever one. I've taught someone who's bilingual <laughs> and then they're learning a third. And so one of the things is, is that it makes it easier to make connections with, ch with children. They can't really do that because especially, especially early on when they're just grasping their first language, um, they can, you know, and, and children who grow up in like bilingual or even trilingual households, they kind of mix the three because they're learning them all at the same time. Um, and so they're kind of more of like a slower, they're, like I said, they have some form of effort because they're having to kind of understand the concept of language. And then there's also the aspect of trying to, um, like I said, just trying to make sense of what these things are. So it's very, like with children, I have to usually be more visually appealing, um, to say like visually, this is what this is. Like, you know, like, um, like where I'll show a picture of a plane and I'm like, avion. This is what this is. Versus adults, it's more so as um, they can make some kind of connection. Um, yeah, they can make some connections. It's easier for me to explain because I try to make connections between what they already know, so like English, and then making the connection to French or Spanish or German. So I kind of like trying to make the connections with both so that that way they're able to um, put it together. So, um, but I also think that adults can learn a little bit faster and I don't know, I guess maybe I'm biased because I have learned, um, you know, within a, it, it has taken me, you know, a few years to get to a point where it can be fluid with these different languages. But I will just say is that, um, sometimes you have to really be, um, I think it just basically boils down to, um, environment and basically motivation <laughs> as we talked about in the first part of that, um, more than anything so and i think that also adult learners one of their common one of the commonalities is that it feels like adults are more um it makes it like it's more about motivation trying to find the time to do these kinds of things um because i noticed that with adult learners they just kind of they're like yeah i'm just trying to find the time to do it because i fell out of it in high school and after that life took over no, because he mentions in uh, further on is that most adults, second language learners, do in fact end up with lower than native like levels in, of proficiency. Most adult learners fail to engage in the task with sufficient motivation, commitment of time or energy, and support from the environments in which they find themselves to expect high levels of success. Um, I think this is, can be an attribute to really any adult who has a job, <laughs> um, who does something. Whereas with children, because they're underage, they generally are more, it, it's, it's very easy for them to focus more on, you know, education because that's what they're all doing. Like up until you're 18 years old, you're pretty much going to school. You know, if you're not dropping out, <laughs> you know, you're pretty much going to school and that's your commitment. That's your focus. You know, when it comes to extracurriculars and all these hobbies and things like that, that they're interested in, it's easy because kids, they're not focused on things that adults are focused on. And that's how sometimes I think that there's that break between high school and going to college and such where I, cause I tutor a lot of, a lot of adults who say I took two years of French in high school and I've, I'm 45 years old and all this time has gone by and I remember a little bit of it, but I don't, I want to revamp it. I want to use it again. So, <laughs> so with that being the case is that, um, adults, it's not so much as that they learn, they don't, they don't learn as good as, you know, as good as, um, you know, 
children. It's just that they have different responsibilities that can prevent them from having to learn, um, to be able to learn those languages. Honestly, I have to force myself. Um, <laughs> in many cases, I kind of have to incorporate it into my lifestyle, which is how I'm able to kind of keep maintaining all these languages after all these years. So, and I still use it, you know, I actively am trying to build relationships that allow me to use it. Teaching it is an avenue because I, by teaching it, it keeps it reinforced in my brain. And I'm constantly doing a lot of research and trying to maintain my language skills so I can actually teach more native like language to my students. Honestly, I will just say that I feel like adults are a lot easier to teach than children. And don't get me wrong, I love children. Um, like I said, I have to teach differently because their different mentalities are different. Like children, their focus is going to be a lot different. So I have to make sure it's more entertaining. I have to make sure I'm more uh, active, like physically active. I have to make sure everything's visual. Um, you know, some you know, in that case, and just kind of trying to break it down to where it makes sense to the average child, <laughs> depending on the age. I've taught as young as four years old. I've taught English to four year olds. And that was like pulling teeth in the very beginning. So that's something I had to work on. I taught kids as old as like 15. Um, and most of the time it's usually homework help. So a lot of times they come with some topic to work on. Like someone said, I want to work on conjugation. Um, I have to work on a project where I'm conjugating these verbs. That's easy because I'm like, okay, well, I know what I'm teaching because this is what they presented to me. Um, adults, it's kind of like more free, um, for me to kind of, uh, I'm, it's more open for me to, um, decide what I want to teach specifically because they're kind of like, I'm trying to learn this language. Teach me, teach me anything, everything I need to know. So it's kind of like, I'm having to make a lesson plan. So it's a lot more, a lot more prep work with adults than it is with kids. So it's kind of like, like a neuroplasticity thing. So no matter how old you are, it's like, you're never too old to really try to learn new things. And so, um, like when people think like, oh, you know, like at, when you're older, you just, your brain just deteriorates and you don't have a whole lot of ability. It just, it might take longer than, than, you know, say someone who's maybe, uh, you know, like 10, <laughs> but at the same time, it's still going to be, it can be a process, especially if you're like 60 years old and you're like, I want to learn a new language. You can, it's absolutely possible. So, um, especially when they said, when they go on to say continuous learning of multiple languages and interaction in multiple cultural environments help, helps maintain a high degree of neuroplasticity related to foreign language acquisition. This is assertion is this assertion is supported by the research that indicates older brains can be revitalized through mental training or workouts to produce functioning characteristics that closely resemble or even exceed those of younger brains. My own experience as well as that of my polyglot colleagues indicated that if there is a strong desire for to become fluent in multiple languages, adults have some clear advantages over children in terms of potential metacognitive and metalinguistic awareness, how language functions, similarities between languages. It, your brain is a muscle and all muscle, everything, it can be retrained. Um, you know, it's a form of cognitive exercise. So if you want to ma maintain your brain, I know sometimes outside of language learning, I really love to do Sudoku puzzles because it kind of keeps your brain mo mo uh, moving. And if your brain is not like your brain can kind of lose some of its function by not using it. So that's kind of where, you know, the assets of the offsets of, um, you know, Alzheimer's, even dementia can come in. I know that um, research shows that that uh, learning a language can actually offset um, Alzheimer's and dementia by at least, I think, four to five years. So really, when you look at the, the result is that learning a language is a form of exercise for your mental brain. So that by the time, let's say you're 80, if you make God willing, you make it to 80, is that, you know, you at least will still have that same mindset. My great grandmother, she lived to be 90 something, I think 94, 95 years old. And she never really had Alzheimer's dementia. I think some part of it can actually contribute to genes, but at the same time, it also considers about how your, your lifestyle, um, early on. So I'm not trying to give a whole lesson on like, you know, I had, you know, on mental exercise, but the fact is, is that with foreign language education, I would say that children do not learn better than adults. Adults, it's easier for them to get motivated 
to learn these kinds of things. They can make, I mean, it's a matter of just making time for it. Um, you know, an environment is everything. Uh, a lot of people come to me learning the language because they have partners that, that speak this language natively. They have work that um, that they want to acquire due to, you know, to having a language under their belt. Um, you know, they, you know, I have a student who come to me for all different kinds of reasons and environment makes a big difference. I taught a student who apparently she has family in Cameroon. And so she was really trying to prep um, a lot <laughs> up until she went to um, Cameroon, I think for um, over the holiday, over the holidays. And so um, being able to prep to be in the environment, and that's basically my goal as a tutor, <laughs> is basically to prepare people to communicate with native speakers. And it really boils down to, like I said, to you, really, um, how motivated are you? How great is the need for it? Um, and it's just basically a matter of, are you willing to take the time? So that's really what I wanted to share. And I hope that this helps you or encourages you if you are an adult over 18 who was just thinking, well, I want to get back into my language learning skills. But I think it's just simply a matter of just being motivated and really putting in the time. It might take longer, but I would not say that, you know, children really learn better. They learn differently. So I hope this helps. I'll see you next time. Bye.